2015 News political analysts have had a very long night, but they have graciously agreed to join us again this morning. Kathy Abernathy, a local Republican political consultant, and Ricardo Perez, the chair of the Kern County Democratic Party. Thank you both so much for being in with sure, us yet sure. again today. Let's get right to it. Uh, Ricardo, what did you think of last night for Joe Biden? I think he surprised a lot of people. Is this now a two-person race between him and Sanders? You know, it's likely going to be a two-person race. Joe Biden is the 77-year-old comeback kid. Um, and we saw uh, after Super Tuesday results that Joe Biden's momentum really started to collide with Bernie's early momentum, um, you know, on making their way to the nomination. I don't think we should discredit, though, the fact that Elizabeth Warren is still in this race. She's the only woman um, in the race still. So I think that that, you know, the fact that there's 30 states remaining, it might help her out. Do you think, though, Elizabeth Warren remaining in the race will hurt Bernie? Um, you know, a lot of people are saying that and pressuring uh, Elizabeth Warren to drop out so the uh, progressive following could go to Bernie, but I don't think that it's going to harm Bernie as much because um, this is something that the progressives want to, to have, right? They want a, a candidate that they can rally behind and uh, once Elizabeth Warren uh, makes it to the convention, let's say, those delegates might end up pledging for Bernie if they don't end up with Warren. Right. Okay. Uh, Kathy, what was your biggest takeaway on the national level last night? Well, you know, it's interesting. We have, <clears throat> with this new era of the youth and, and, uh, and okay. minorities, we have an era of all the candidates that are leading are in their 70s. I think that says something about, you know, we're all living longer, and it's not odd to have presidential candidates all in their 70s. You know, we had them in their 40s and 50s. But So I think both parties, it's interesting to me that... Uh, uh, societies, the younger people, minority vote too, is going more toward the older candidates. But uh, I think uh, Donald Trump, uh, he did well in California last night. A big, I think uh, 1.5 million Republican votes have been cast. And uh, it will be a great battle with either of these candidates. I, I just think if the Democrats go with Biden, the, the debate with Trump and Biden will be pretty rough for Biden. But um, I'd probably enjoy watching. Trump and Sanders. Do you think that if it is, you know, in November, uh, Trump and Biden, do you think that uh, there may be some more moderates that uh, who may be on the fence would go with Biden? Well, is there a bigger threat to his yeah. campaign? You know, I, I think there's enthusiasm with Sanders. I think with Biden, it's, well, he's somebody and he's not Trump. But I don't know an issue really that divides Trump and uh, Sanders and Biden. They're both on the far left side of the spectrum, mostly growing government, and I think there's plenty of momentum. We saw it here in California last night, if you notice, statewide school bond proposals uh, went down. Uh, people are just a little tired of being constantly hit up for more and more government spending. So I think either way, I think Trump can, can really maximize on that. Let's bring it back here at home and talk about some local races. Last night on 17 News at 5, you both said one of the local races you were most interested in was that 4th District Supervisor race. What did you think of the outcome um, so far? Emilio Huerta was just on with us. He is behind right now, incumbent David Couch. He says he's not giving up just yet, but his chances aren't looking great this morning. So there was quite a bit of a large swing since last night. Night. Um, and I think also the fact that, um, you know, a lot of the votes haven't been ca uh, counted yet. Um, we might see Emilio inch a little bit closer to the numbers that Couch has. So I don't think we can discredit the fact that those ballots aren't counted yet. But, I mean, 1,200 ballots behind. I mean, is this, is it a reasonable, uh, is it reasonable to say that he still has a chance to come forward? I believe so, yeah. I think that this is a very contested race. Um, you know, the incumbent advantage that Couch has is kind of countered with Emilio's deep roots in the district. So I think that, um, you know, even if Emilio doesn't necessarily overcome the numbers, he's going to get very close to it. Kathy? Well, it's, uh, it'll be shocking. In a couple hours, you're going to hear the county elections office say there's, you know, 82,000 ballots out there that haven't been counted. Now, a lot of that trickles down to just a lot of mistaken ballots. But we have seen California change the law, the legislature change the law, that ballots could have been mailed even yesterday and show up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those numbers we don't know. So I, Couch has a nice lead. 
but there could be a whole lot of ballots out there that have been touched. Again, 1,264 uh, ballots. That's the gap there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So like you said, there's still a lot of votes to, to talk about. Let's also talk about the 21st Congressional District because again, this is something that uh, is interesting to a lot of people as well. You have uh, incumbent T.J. Cox, who of course uh, won the general election last November or in 2018, uh, but he also lo or lost the primary in June 2018 against uh, then uh, David Valadeo. What do you think about the results from last night, considering that uh, even though T.J. Cox did win here in Kern County, overall district-wide, uh, he did lose? So I think that it's uh, two, essentially two different electorates voting. A lot less people come out to vote for the primary than they do in the general. So I still think that uh, T.J. Cox might be able to pull off the win and remain seated uh, in the general. Is T.J. in trouble? I don't think he's in trouble, no. Kathy, your take? Is Valadeo well, going to reclaim that seat? Well, we hope so, but uh, you know, this district is Kern and Kings mostly, and right. Kings is much more conservative, much more Republican seat, and it's Valadeo's home. And I think that uh, if, if they run a strong campaign, get Valadeo out there again, and with the, with the president on the ticket, uh, even if he may not win California, uh, he's popular with, with conservatives, with, with even the farm labor community. They know where their jobs come from, and Trump has been very strong four years ago and last week pushing for water. Uh, and so I think in that district, they could, uh, Valdeo will do quite well. I was well. going to say, I mean, you know, a couple were when President Trump was here, you know, David Valdeo was on stage with the president. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will help him uh, in the election? Well, I, I think he should embrace that president because every issue he's fighting for helps the people of that district. So I, I would hope so. I would hope that would be his strategy. All right, Kathy and Ricardo, we're going to be hearing much more for you in the next few weeks. Still a lot of big contests to go, of course, before we decide on the presidential nominees. And we will be talking about that later on this month with you both. Thank you for coming in. Thank you.